Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we are going to take apart this box that has the Linux Labs Yak in it. As we build this, you're going to say, that looks a little bit like a TAS-6. It's not a TAS-6 clone, but they clearly took design cues from that style of structure. And so it's a direct drive printer with a print volume like a CR-10. So we're going to see how this works. Stay tuned. Inside the box, we have the Yak. It's three-point bed leveling. Looks like the bed inserts into these units fixtures. Nice big metal wheels for leveling. That's nice. And they even include half a kilo of black filament. Nice. Let me pull everything out of here. here go. The beast is out of the box. You can see it definitely takes design cues from a TAS-6. Although it's not, I wouldn't consider it a clone of a TAS-6. Um, what's really interesting is this print head. This is all V-rollers and um, dual Z end stops. So dual Z plus dual end stops, so you never have to worry about leveling your X gantry. But this is a fully constrained path for the filament. There is no, you can see the, I'll show you a close up of this later, but the filament has nowhere to go. It's, it's going into the hot end whether it wants to or not. <laughs> so this should be fantastic for flexible filaments. And it should also be fantastic for splicing. So cut a piece and stick a new kind in and a new kind in. It should be very good for that. So inside the box was your glass plate, which we will see if it's level in a moment. Some basic quick start guide, a sand disc, a class 4 SD card, an acrylic spool holder. It's just basically a flat piece of um, acrylic, and it's just going to sit right on the end here. Um, it's more than thick enough. I'm not worried about that. That's, that's not going nowhere. Power cord, half a kilo of filament. Ubiquitous blue USB cable. Um, this got sent to me by GearBest. So I did not pay for this, they sent it to me. I requested this particular printer. I saw it and I was like, that looks cool, I want that. And they said yes. Um, big old bed clips, they don't need to be that big. I'm gonna change that off to the small ones. A print removal tool, that's interesting. That is an interesting change from normal, and it is sharpened. Very nice. That's actually a pretty nice removal tool. Your nippers, uh, zip ties, decent wrenches. They're, they actually look like halfway decent wrenches. They don't look like the normal junk you usually get. An actual crescent wrench, a spanner. Now, it's a cheap one, but it's not that normal, you know, plate stamped crap you get, the die cut crap you get, it's an actual wrench, that's interesting. And that is it, a couple of bolts, I'm guessing, yep, these are the four bolts that are going to go from this to this, so two up front, two in the back, so this will be a very, very strong setup. And we will go from there, so stay tuned. A little plastic porn for everybody. Everybody likes that. <laughs> okay, one thing I don't like about this printer, and I would like to see them change this, I would like to see a piece of aluminum included with this, and you sandwich the aluminum to glass. It doesn't allow as good a transmission of heat, but because I'm attaching the silicone heat bed directly to this piece of glass, if anything ever happens to this piece of glass, I have to replace my heat bed too. And that's probably 30 or 40 bucks, while this is $3. So I would like to see... Um, a piece of aluminum on here since aluminum will be durable. I have to replace the glass. I don't have to replace the aluminum and therefore I don't have to replace the um, heat bed. So that would be a good suggestion for the manufacturer to make that change. This is efficient. It's less materials. allows them to keep the cost lower and it also increases your heat transmission since the heat bed is attached directly to the glass, which is nice. But this breaks and I would prefer the expensive heat pad to not be on something that breaks. All right, this is your bed. It uses six roller wheels, three by three, and it looks like three fixed and three eccentric nuts. They were way too tight. Like this bed was like, guh, 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 from all the flat spots. So I loosened all three nuts until I can spin them by hand. See, I'm spinning it by hand. We suggest once you loosen all three till they spin freely, tighten up the center one until it just grabs. Now these three are spinning freely. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten up this one just a hair until it grabs. Oh, wait a minute, this way. There we go, a little looser. 
a little tighter. Just enough till it grabs. See how it grabs? It just barely grabs. That's what you want. Same thing on this side. Got it. And now, tighten up that one just a hair. Now, all three wheels roll the rail. And that one needs just a smidge. Okay. And now, when I roll it, no flat spots. Feels nice and smooth. There you go. You're good. Bed is installed. Um, the I don't think you need the binder clips. This bed isn't going anywhere. I don't think binder clips are necessary to hold that thing in place. Um, two screws here, two screws here holding this in. The bed is a little flexible, but I don't think that'll actually flex while it's printing. Um, I think it's worth it to have the lighter carriage. It is thick enough. But yes, I do believe this will be a noisy printer. Oh yeah. I can already hear the noise. <laughs> so we're going to be putting some um, dampers on this little bad boy. Um, not top heavy at all. No, all the weight's down here. It looks like the filament goes on the right side, front facing back. So now we're going to install the filament holder which just hammer nuts right in place right there. Here is the inside. It is an MKS base version 1.6 board, no heat sinks. Wire management is non-existent. <laughs> nice big fan. I'll get rid of most of this fan grill since that's gonna block most of the air from getting out, if any of it gets out, because they actually have a gap between the fan and the grill, which is going to probably cause most of the air to just buff it and recirculate inside, so that's not good. I'll fix that. Generic 400 watt, 24 volt power supply. They do use proper crimp ons and they do use some sheathing, but the wire management's pretty messy. So I will clean that up at a later date if the printer proves itself worth it. We shall see. Okay, all that smoke, that was the end stop wire for the Y axis igniting itself on fire and burning. <laughs> My guess is a piece of wire was poking out of this and touching the chassis, which probably grounded it to mains. Um, and that's why I probably had enough power to do that. So I've made a short dip to basically make it think it's always home for Y. And then I just manually home the Y just so I can get it going. And I'll have to get Lexan Labs to send me a new harness for the uh, Y axis stepper and um, end stop. And, but right now I'm going to level the bed. It is a three-point leveling, so what you're going to want to do is get these two points pretty close and then bring this point up. Alrighty, we got it going. The end stop wire harness was burned, so I had to make a temporary short for it to trigger the end stop. And um, the problem is by leaving the end stop triggered, it would move this way on Y, but not that way on Y because it thinks it's at zero the moment it tries to move that way. So I had to temporarily short it, like the end up stop switch, and then yank it out. And now it's printing fine. Uh, there's also a loose connection. Oh, I'm losing my temperature. I cannot believe that's actually printing at 150 degrees. That's amazing. I let go of the connection. Come on. That's it. Yeah, there's going to be a big layer gap there. I accidentally let it go. No, I turn all the printers off when I'm doing a live stream. I couldn't hold this thing for four hours. As soon as this thing is printed enough for me to check for print quality, I'm going to call it quits and I'm going to pull this board and try to resolder that connection.
I think the temperature's too high. Yeah, it definitely doesn't like printing that hot. Yeah, this one's good, that one's wobbling. But it's not constrained, so it should not affect print quality. You got it, man. Have a good night, Yaris. I'll get it working. Not yet, but it should be here theoretically by next week. So either next week or the week after, I'll do the A20M. Yeah, I know. Oh, crap. It's still recording. So I got the printer working. Um, the Y end stop was bad. The wire shorted against the frame or something, and it fried the entire wire. I mean, smoke everywhere came out of this thing because the wire along its entire length burned as it shorted. I'm guessing it shorted the main... And, um, so I bypassed that temporarily with a momentary little plug to trigger the end stop so it'll home. And once you're homed, as long as you manually push the bed to the zero, zero spot, then it'll print fine. Um, I also have a problem with the, come on, with the heater cartridge not heating up. So there's a loose connection on the, um, the main board or the wire going into the heater cartridge socket. So I'm doing a test print now just to see if it works and then I'll take it out of there and check it out. Could be a cold solder connection. Could be they left some insulation on the wire going in. It's definitely the, the, um, the electrical junction box that's in there. The um, Not a junction box. Um, I don't know what you call it. It's a little, with a little green plug with the screws that hold the wires. And um, so we'll get it going. Stay tuned.